Hello viewers, so I'm back again with another video and this time we'll learn SSO. So this video will be an introduction, introductory session to SSO. We are from Software Circle, we advocate free le learning. So let's begin. So what is in the agenda today? In the agenda we have what is SSO, how does SSO works? SSO workflows, each SSO secure, we'll also see what are the different types of SSO, what is the benefit of SSO. So what is SSO? SSO stands for single sign-on. It is one of the key concepts that allows you to log into one system and you can access multiple systems in the backend. For example, when we log into Google, you can access the other products like, such as Gmail, YouTube, Google Docs, etc. You don't need to log in again for each product. SSO allows the user to access software resources across system in the backend. SSO configuration simplifies the process of how a user logs into the system. Single sign-on is an authentication method that enables user to securely authenticate with multiple applications and website by using just one set of credentials. How does SSO works? So SSO works based upon a trusted relationship set, a relationship setup between an application known as a service provider and an identity provider like one login. This trust relationship is often based upon a certificate that is exchanged between the identity provider and the service provider. This certificate can be used to sign identity information that is being sent from the identity provider to the service provider so that the service provider knows it is coming from a trusted source. In SSO, the identity data takes the form of token which contain ident identifying bits of information about the user such as user's email address or his username. Now let's see what is the workflow of SSO. So the first step when after user navigates to the browser with the, for the application login and if it is as SSO then how does it work? The service provider sends a token that contains some information about the user like their email address to the SSO system, the identity provider as part of the request to, the authenticate, to authenticate the user. The identity provider first check to see whether the user has already been authenticated, in which case it will grant the user access to the service provider application. If the user has not logged in, they will be prompted to do so by providing the credential required by the identity provider. Once the identity provider validates the credential provided, it will send a token back to the service provider confirming a successful authentication. This token is passed through the user's browser to the service provider. The token that is received by the service provider is validated according to the trusted relationship that was set up between the service provider and the identity provider during the initial configuration. If the user has not logged in, they will be prompted to do so by providing the credential required by the identity provider. And after that, the user is granted access to the service provider. So these are the eight steps that happens in SSO. Let's understand the same through a diagram. So in this diagram, we can see there are service provider, there are identity provider, and the users or browsers. So first of all, the user browser, user browses to the service provider, request is sent to the user's browser. In the third step, access request is asked from the identity provider. User logs in if necessary. Token sent to the user browsers. Token sent to apps endpoint with the user identity. Response received and the user is validated. And then at the end, access is granted. Is SSO secure? There are many reasons why SSO can improve security. A single sign-on solution can simplify username and password management for both users and administrator. Users no longer have to keep track of different set of credentials and can simply remember single, more complex passwords. SSO often enables users to just get access to their application much faster. SSO can also cut down the amount of time the help desk has to spend on assisting users with the lost password. Administrators can centrally control requirements like password, complexity, and MFA. Administrator can also more quickly relinquish login privileges across the board when a user leaves the organization. Single sign-on does have some drawbacks as well. For example, you might have applications that you want to have logged on a bit more.
Now, what is the different types of SSO that we hear every day? So, FIM, FIM, Federated Identity Management, OAuth, OpenID Connect, Security Access Markup Language, SAML, and same sign on SSO. SSO is actually a part of larger concepts called Federated. Federated Entity Management, thus sometimes SSO is referred to as Federated SSO. FIM just refers to a trusted relationship that is created between two or more domain or identity management system. Single sign-on is often a feature that is available within a FIM architecture. We'll learn about all these in our future videos. Now, what are the benefits of SSO? First is convenience. User have only user only need to remember one set of login details by connecting your site to the login at Google. You ensure that even a device user can remember how to log in. We just log in to Google. Transparency. User knows what is being said from one system to another, at least in a delegated system. Speed. With SSO, user don't have to go through the lengthy sign up, sign in, and authorization process. And let's work on the backend server. Meaning you don't have to fudge around with the password while you're reducing your Hack risk is important, even more important than not having to reset people password every five minutes. So that's the small introduction to SSO. If you didn't understand any of the concept, do like write in the comment box. And if you want to know more, let us know in the comment section, we can create more videos on SSO. If you find the video informative, do like the videos and subscribe to the channel. And if you have not watched our previous videos, go and like and subscribe the channel and do watch our previous videos. If you find it is helpful, do let us know in your comments. If you want on a given topic, we should make videos, please write in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching the channel. This is Jitendra from Software Circle.